HP has made a lot of workstations over the years, this is the Z640. This workstation was introduced in early 2015 with a whole lineup of Core i-Series and Xeon server chips. Even though this workstation has been out for quite some time, it still has some good life left in it and we're going to give it a few upgraded parts. This machine is going to go to a friend of mine who's been rendering videos on a laptop, so hopefully this will be a substantial upgrade to what he currently has. This particular unit doesn't have anything in its top two expansion bays, does have a CD drive, lots of USB 3 as well as dedicated audio and microphone jacks. Along on the back we have our power, PS2 ports, USB 2.0, more USB 3, Ethernet, dedicated audio, an expansion block for USB, and then it's got two graphics cards. We're going to open up the side panel. The entire chassis is made of very thick material, all metal. And something I love about this is everything is so well designed. Take that front side panel. It has a dedicated diagram showing where everything is supposed to be and what everything is inside the chassis. These things were designed to be full of equipment. There's so much extra space in here. We have the K2000 Quadro card as well as the NVS310 viewing card. We only have one RAM stick in, but we're going to try and find another one in our box of spares. And here off to the side, we can see that it has two additional power cables for the GPUs. Both of these are six pin connectors, as you can see here. There's also a section to receive a daughter board right here, because this machine had the option to come with two CPUs. The power supply is even removable. I really like to see these features inside these more premium workstations. Everything is modular. And here's our questionable box of spares, but we were able to find a GT740 SC 4GB, and I was able to find another 16GB stick of ECC memory and an SSD. Also, a Bluetooth card, because why not? First thing that we're going to do is we're going to pop the two retaining clips on the side, removing that bar out of place, and then we're going to depress these two tabs in each of these locations to remove each graphics card. And with a little effort, they just lift up. We'll use this card in another machine later. And then we're also going to remove the NVS310 card with the same method. Once the cards have been removed, we need to adjust the spacers. We'll just move one down to make space for our new GPU. And here we'll take the GT740 and slide it into place. This is a PCIe Gen 3 16X slot, and it just clicks into place. Closing that top cover, and then we're going to connect one of those six pin power connectors into our GPU power slot. If we take a look at that back plate, we can see the different memory configurations. And so we're going to slide something into that first and then in that second slot. This is the same memory stick that is already in there. It is 16 gigabytes at 2400 mega transfers per second. We're gonna check the slide rails and then we're slowly going to insert the DIMM into the slot. Now it's time to put in our SSD. These portable caddies are super easy. They just pull right out. And this one even has a two and a half inch adapter bay inside. The secondary bay is for a full three and a half inch drive, which we might add later, but not today. To take this adapter out, we just have to slide off the pins and extract the internal adapter. And then pushing both springs, it just pulls right out. The drive will fit in in this orientation, so I just have to remember to leave everything lined up so I don't forget which way it's supposed to go. This is a toolless installation, so there's no retaining screws. It's just force fit into those tiny pins.
And now that the adapter is full, we're just going to slide it into the larger tray caddy. Once the tray caddy is ready, we're going to take the external cover and slide it back on. And then we can slide the entire tray back into its slot and lock it into place. That concludes all the internal upgrades, so we're going to slide the top cover back into place. And now it's time to boot up the machine. Using F2 to get into diagnostic mode. And inside this machine, we're able to see that it does have a Xeon E5 1650V3. That is a six core, 12 thread processor, 32 gigabytes of ECC memory, and our storage drive. Now we'll go into our BIOS setup and I just like to make some adjustments that'll happen in the background for the benefit of the machine and my usability. And then we'll reboot the machine. After it's booted back up, we'll go into the boot menu and select our boot drive. And it's time to install Windows 10. It is a new drive in this system, so it will require some formatting. We'll do install only. Here's our drive. We'll add a new partition, apply. It'll format the drive for us and we just click next. And after all of that and a few more minutes, we are ready to install Windows and go through the entire setup. And once we get through all of those menus, it takes us right in to Windows 10. While that runs in the background, we're gonna install this Wi-Fi chip. This will eventually be hooked up to ethernet, but not quite yet. Going to task manager, we're able to see that almost everything reports in, but our GPU still isn't listed. We need to run some updates before we can get that to happen. And we're able to see if we go into device manager, Yep, so many of these devices are not recognized and need drivers. So we're gonna hop over to Windows Update through Settings, and we are going to start pulling in all of these extra drivers through the update system. And do not forget to do the optional updates. They may say optional, but they make a world of difference. There are so many of them. And once those updates run, we are now able to see that our GT740 does show up in Task Manager. Now that all the updates have been completed, we're going to put on all of our preferred software. So we're going to open up Edge and we're going to go to Ninite.com. Ninite is a great place to get all of your different applications in a single install file. So we'll grab our browsers, our utilities, Anything that we might need, we're going to pull in from Ninite, and then we have one single click installation. Then the install file will download, we open it up, and we'll begin that installation process to get all of our preferred systems installed on this clean OS. 
And that's it. We now have fully put together this system, hardware upgrade, it's got its new software, and it is ready to give out so that it can start doing some video editing work. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, but for right now, it's time to put this machine back to sleep.